everybody. Welcome to This Week in Android. I'm your host, Ashley Esqueda, and Mark Jeffrey. I'm back. You're back. I'm back. Did you did you save the world with Peter Gabriel? Yeah, well, we're here, right? So yeah. apparently I succeeded, yeah. I'm shocked you didn't wear your tour shirt. Uh, well, you know, I did like for half of last week, so now I'm done. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> you're, you're happy I didn't wear it, trust me. Oh, I would have been so thrilled. I'd have been like, you're wearing a tour t-shirt. Uh, Jeff Ammons, a.k.a. Wolverine, everybody's favorite. Uh, yep. Everybody's favorite Apple hater is not here with us. He's off in Oregon fighting robots or something. Apple robots. Apple robots. That yeah, must be it. That's, that's it. it. He somehow found some sort of Apple robots. <laughs> uh, our app of the week this week is Otter app. And uh, we have Eric Wood, the owner of Otter, uh, on with us today to talk about distracted driving and how Otter is fighting that and combating that and working with a lot of other really cool organizations. Um, so I have to start off and say, last week I made some statements that I would like to comment about. Did you really? I did. Okay. I did. So can we, Kenny, can we roll that? And Evo before Oprah. And I understand that Oprah might have a little bit more of an audience than our show does. But I just wanted to say that I saw her talking about the uh, this stopping texting while driving mm -hmm. campaign and everything. And she just like pulls out an Evo. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> white hot so um i have to actually i'm going to take this time to apologize to hdc because shortly after that clip aired or shortly after our show aired i got a tweet from somebody at hdc's pr company saying we did not give her an evo mm. so oprah had to give the phone back even oprah did not get an evo to even see oprah yes so so hdc i'm sorry so i you, now you and oprah are like on the same level now exactly HTC, I now feel that you regard me and Oprah as equals, so thanks. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yes, good to know. Um, but uh, let's let's do the news. Oh, news time. Yeah. Okay, so our first story today: uh, the Sprint Evo 4G gets an official price and date. So the wait, and this is from Android and Me, I should mention as well. We're yeah. getting a lot of our stories these days. Yes. Uh, at AndroidandMe.com. Uh, the wait is finally over. Today, Sprint announced an official price point and release date for the HTC Evo 4G. Uh, and that date is June 4th. Uh, user, users will be able to pick up the Evo for $199.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate, new contract, and premium data buy-up. Uh, it'll ship, ship with Android 2.1, but no flash. Well, yeah, 2.2. 2. 2. 2. Froyo yeah, is, fl is full know, flash still. support. I'm, sh I'm, first of all, I, I'm shocked that yeah, it didn't because I totally too. called that. I was like, it's going to be 2.2. Yeah, you did. But IO still hasn't happened, so maybe they're just trying to like trick us. So you think there'll be like an update? If you know, if the phone doesn't you actually ship with it, I think it'll be within like two weeks yeah, okay. of the phones. I, I think so you think they'll make a big weeks. announcement at IO? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Well, okay. So uh, the Evo 4G has been one of the hottest phones these days. Uh, sporting a 4.3-inch screen, dual cameras, uh, mobile hotspot. Oh, that's awesome for up to eight users. So now you can do tethering. It has an overdrive so now I can, built in. I can tether my iPad to my Android device. Yes, since you Since I can. can't do it with my iPhone. Yes, you can. So that would be awesome. There's, but there's some pricing stuff. Okay. So which is, um, they, there's been a lot of talk oh, about the cost. Like, if, were they going to add pricing? Or? Yep. So the data premium is a $10 mandatory uh, addition to your bill. And the activation of the mobile hotspot, oh, okay, using the this Evo's is... built-in overdrive, will set you back another $29 extra per month. You know what, surprised by that? Because I, first of all, I'm a cheapskate. Yeah. And secondly, I feel like um, I had sort of imagined it being, I knew they were going to charge for it, obviously. Yeah, sure, of course. But, but 40 I would bucks? have, 40 extra dollars for, well, the $10 we thought at first, everybody thought at first that that was optional. Like yeah. if you lived in a 4G city, you could activate 4G, but it's not. It's a $10 mandatory just data. Yeah. Like it's basically for all the data your your phone is going to pull down. Um, and then on top of that, if you want to do the overdrive, it's another $30 a month. So an extra 40 bucks a month. To be fair, Sprint used to have the everything data plan that was $99.99, yeah. which is exactly what this would make it, including the True. hotspot and all this stuff. Um, it's a, uh, but I just still think that that overdrive is too expensive. Yeah, I would I have said so. twenty dollars. Twenty dollars so. to me was the sweet spot for the overdrive. I don't think for me, like I don't think I'm going to pay for it unless I'm like always, always on the go. Yeah. But uh, some it's... people will easily pay for it because it's an extra, you know, still ninety nine ninety nine yeah. a month for a, a hotspot for eight different 
phones. I Which mean, is if, pretty awesome. Yeah, if we had 4G here. Actually, that's the thing. If you got if you have eight people sort of sharing that, then that, that makes it's a lot pretty more good. Sense. Yeah. So that's not so bad. Yeah. Um, okay. So next big story: HTC HTC sues Apple for patent infringement. So HTC taking the gloves off again. Yeah. Uh, HTC responded today to Apple lawsuits by filing their own patent infringement claim with the United States International Trade Commission, commission to halt the importation and sale of the iPhone, iPad, and iPod in the United States. They're uh, fighting back. Yeah. So the complaint outlines five HTC patents infringed by Apple products, uh, but we don't know the specific details on which patents, uh, which is interesting. HTC does not have a deep patent portfolio compared to someone like, say, Palm. So... I mean, so the, the way these things sort of work is, you know, everyone's always suing everyone for patents, especially in, in a competitive market like this, right? Yeah, remember so, our, our lovely little chart? That's it's right. Just, it's a mess. So, I, you know, so HTC is being very aggressive here with their with a really very small aggressive. patent portfolio. So Tiny. Yeah. And, well, and I think that I had seen something online where they had sort of examined the patents that they were talking about. And, like, HTC has sort of put out this, um, this video about... Uh, you know, they have this little history of HTC, and like what they said, like in 2007, I think it's 2007, we changed the way that you use your fingers, like to, to like operate a mobile phone and stuff. And um, I, I just don't know. It seems kind of. It seems a little sketch, I have to admit. I hate to say it. It seems kind of like the patents they have, obviously, I mean, if, the, if you look at any kind of chart that shows how many patents HTC holds, then Google holds, yes. then Apple holds. <laughs> yes, Apple's it's by just far. It's really, yeah. by far. Uh, but what about Palm? Where does Palm sit in this? Palm, has, Palm holds a lot of patents, but now they're, now they're owned by HP. Yeah, that's so true. they picked up their entire patent portfolio. That is a huge patent portfolio, portfolio though. So. And, and, I mean, and that's why Apple hasn't gone after. Yeah. That's why Apple hasn't gone <laughs> after Palm. They're smart enough I mean, to go after Palm. It would be foolish yeah, of them to go dumb. after Palm. So. So, um, so virtually everyone in the mobile industry has patent lawsuits against a competitor. It's ridiculous. So not really a surprise. Um, so this whole thing is probably just going to get tied up in court until some sort of settlement is reached. I wish we could all just, I wish some judge would just be like, this is completely out of hand. Yeah. Like, let it go. Like, and everybody, that's we're gonna just going to. That's the way patent lawsuits go. Yeah, I know. But it's just like, I mean, I wish everybody would just like, Play cooler nice. heads would prevail and yeah, just well. say, you know what? Okay, you can use ours if we can use yours. And like, because there's so, it, I feel like it curbs innovation. Yeah. To be afraid of, of violating. I, I don't think anyone's afraid, though. Yeah. I, don't think, I mean, all, really, the, there's no result on the end user. There's no result in terms of, uh, you know, I don't think on innovation. The only result is that money pours out of companies and into lawyers' pockets. That's it. That's, yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, exactly. A waste of time except for people who make money on this, a.k.a. lawyers. Yeah, Precisely. All right, so next, uh, next story. Google additions to offer 4 million titles at launch. Uh, so we knew that Google was planned to launch a bookstore. I know. We right? talked about this we last did. week. I was so sad that you weren't here. I know. I was like, I that's, my, Mark, that's my Mark story. Mark, the author. Like, I know. I saw that. I watched here. it afterwards. I was like, oh, my God, that's my story. Why was I not here? So anyway, so um, I'm a big book person, for those of you who don't know. Um, Google is launching their own bookstore, much like Apple's iBooks right. on the iPad uh, or Amazon's, well, Amazon's. just Amazon.com, the right. Kindle store. So um, so just to you know, the thing that's interesting about this is that Google has managed to well, Google's got the largest selection of books, bar none. So just to put it in perspective, um, iBooks, which is Apple's offering, has 60,000 titles. Uh, Amazon for Kindle is at 500,000. And Barnes & Noble now has a million e-books with their, with their new store and new device. I can't remember the name. Right, the Nook, but, yeah. So, um, so if Google manages to pull this off, um, they're going to have 4 million titles. Well, they're Which saying that huge. they, yeah, like they're saying that they, um, well, Japan today had mentioned that I guess Google, they reported that allegedly they managed to secure more than 25,000 authors and publishing, or publishers to participate in this service at launch, but when it that, launches. Yes. So. But, but how does that number relate to the 4 million? That's why I'm confused. Well, about. if you think about like publisher, like publishing houses, they have a litany of different right. books, different, you know, authors, different people. Um, so you're looking at 25,000 authors and publishers who so may have stand up a say, house of novels okay. that can be released under the bookstore Got it. Okay. for Google. So you're looking at, you know, through 25,000 publishers and authors, you're getting 4 million different books. Plus, you know, and I think they're in that 4 million, they're counting whatever is not, um, that, that the copyright law has actually expired on. Ah, uh, so the public domain. Yeah, well, public anything domain in the public books. domain yeah, that makes sense. Is, is also fair game in that four million. So basically, so now when the, when the Android tablets come out, which they're about to start hitting in 
right. later this year is going to be the tablet a apocalypse is almost upon the us. tablet apocalypse yes so, which is good I mean, we look forward to the tab apocalypse mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, and as, as I've always contended the purpose of tablets is to read books or watch video but basically to consume media right. um, so this now puts the Android tablets uh, in an advantage I would think over the iPad when this when this happens so well if they, I mean if they're if they're pulling down if if they even get close to I mean even if they get two million books yeah newspapers, magazines, that's double well, the, the most that, that Barnes & Noble has. Yes. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, the, the thing that really sucks about the iPad and the book off, the iBooks offering in particular is the lack of selection. I mean, I go search for books all the time in there, and there's, like, big books that, are, that aren't in it. And I know you, have, you don't have an iPad, so you haven't experienced this. So it's just right. really frustrating. I go, I assume that they're in there, and, and I not. can't, yeah, I'm just like, I can't believe this book isn't in there. I, I, it's happened to me, like, five or six times. Yeah. So, so, yeah. That's why I still it's go buy them. I, I, you know what it is for me? I was telling a friend of mine, I will buy um, books, e-books, when, when there's some sort of function on the tablet that puffs out like a little smell of like fresh paper. Because <laughs> that's the thing for me, like I love the smell of like a brand new book. Right. Like I'm very like, it's, I'm very, 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 my olfactory nerves need that. Got it. Like, so I need so my you need the full book experience. Need. Yeah, I need the book experience. I'm going to hold it and... Oh, it would just be so great. Well, um, I, don't, I don't think there's an app for that. No, there's not. No, there's no app for that. And, you know, no pricing yet um, on the cost of the books or even how they're going to distribute it. Because right now, uh, you know, for those informed know this, but, like, for those uninformed, Android doesn't have a platform like iTunes no. to, to release books like this on. So. I'm thinking maybe at Google I.O. we may hear something about like a new Well, operating... Google's obviously going to have to come up with something very much like iTunes or right. the Amazon bookstore. I'm hoping that they come up with something like that because Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, the two biggest, yeah. already are locked. Yeah. I mean, they've got their own thing going on. Now, they could partner with somebody, but, but I don't see Google Ooh, doing that. Like Google goes for it. Yeah. I mean, when they swing, they swing for the fence. Oh, well, remains to be seen. Yep. Okay, so next story, the top three carriers reject Google's phone store. No Nexus One for Sprint. There's an additional story to this, too, but go ahead. Is there? Okay. So, in a surprise move, Sprint has reversed their earlier plans to carry Google's Nexus One. Uh, Gizmodo uh, is citing the upcoming release of the HTC Evo 4G as the reason, but um, the story here at Android and Me says, let's just call it what it is. The three biggest carriers in the United States, being Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint, have all rejected Google's approach to selling phones directly to consumers, which is, you know, you don't go into a store, you have to basically it order it online, mm -hmm. which is... That's crazy. And I, I, we've talked we about, this. about this. I like to hold a phone. Yeah. I like to play with it. I want to see what it does, how it feels yeah. in my hands. Everyone's, I think that experiment's been run, and everyone agrees it's a failure. Yeah. So anyway. So all the parties involved are probably going to play it cool and say nice things, but really, they're just they're just not into it. The carriers, carriers are not ready to give up the sale of a phone that, that operates. Oh, so question. If the carriers are not obviously ready to give up the sale of a phone that operates on their network, why did they announce support in the first place and then pull it? Yeah, I'm, I have no idea. It's but bizarre. in a in an additional piece of the story today, but as I was driving here, um, Google announced that they are actually they basically admitted that it didn't work, yeah, and that they were going to start partnering with carriers to carry them in the store. So, but I think it's only going to be because now that the Evo's here and the Incredibles here, a lot of people don't see a need for the Nexus One on their own network. Yeah. So I have a feeling it's only going to be in T-Mobile. Like you're gonna you're gonna be able to walk into a T-Mobile store and buy one, but they're gonna partner. So it'll just be yeah. And see, and I agree. Like some people don't like Sense UI, and that's you know that's their choice. Like I know I have a couple friends who are like I don't really know if I like it. Yeah. But with the Nexus One, I mean, it's just one of those things where I don't think it's gonna go to I don't think it's gonna go to Verizon, Verizon, AT&T, or Sprint now because it's too late. Right, right. We have too many, like, too many phones that are surpassing the Nexus One in terms of capability um, to... Yeah, to, very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. like, it's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this next story, this shocked me when I saw it. I had no idea that it was this close. Yeah. Uh, Android passes iPhone sales in the U.S. smartphone market. So now Android's out ahead of iPhone. It's finally happened, and it didn't take that long at all. Uh, new market research from the NDP group confirms, confirms Android phones outsold iPhone last quarter in the United States. Uh, the BlackBerry is the top with 36% market share, or 36% last quarter, anyway, sales. Um, 28%, Android has 28%, and the iPhone is now at 21%. Mm -hmm. So that's... It's, it's awesome. Stunning. But also, to be fair, the iPhone only is one phone on one carrier. Yeah, well, that's true, but nonetheless... Which is, I mean, for one phone, one carrier, 21% is pretty big. But yeah. still, I mean, to, to pull in, you know, 28%, 
and to surpass the iPhone in terms of sales. Yeah. That's that's huge for Google. It is. And that's huge for Android in terms of people sort of kind of perking up and being like, what's this? Like, I think more people are seeing Android phones in the hands of their friends as opposed to yeah, the an iPhone. iPhone. Sure. So. Well, I think also that, I mean, we, we've talked about this on other shows, the, the cost over time of owning an Android device is half mm -hmm. that of owning an iPhone. So right. just from purely economic standpoint, even people that see other people with an iPhone, they realize they can buy an Android-based device for significantly less. Right. Now, somebody mentioned in chat that it doesn't count iPod Touch or iPad, and that's fair. That's true. But I think if we're just talking about smartphones... Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I think it's, it's got to be phone to phone. That's the way to... Because yeah. there is no commensurate... Well, I guess there is a commensurate. There are commensurate Android devices. I'm, not yet I tend popular. to Yeah, yeah. And I tend to agree with the Android and me where they're asking, like, the real question now, how long can the iPhone remain an AT&T exclusive? With the bad <laughs> network, <Well>. with 4G <laughs> coming, with the Evo coming out. I mean, phones like the Evo coming out... How long is it going to take? For, well, supposedly they're under contract for until, five years. Yeah, till till May. Well, to see, it it's a five-year contract, so it ends in May of 2012. Oh man, yes. that's a long time. That's a long time. That's like, I mean, oh, like I always say, like in modeling, that's like your whole career is five years. Yeah. Like if you are a model, like your your whole career is over in five years. Yeah. It's like from 14 to 19, then you're an old woman. Yes. Nobody wants you anymore. Well, <laughs> let's hope. Uh, <laughs> But well, this AT and T deal is just—I mean, everyone everyone hates AT and T. Well, it's just crazy to go exclusive for that long. But then again, they were the first person really to break the smartphone barrier in terms of it was mainstream. Probably something they had purchasing. to do to do it. Yeah. So, we'll never know. Yeah. Okay. So next story: Square brings simple mobile payments to Android. So Square is a simple payment utility for everyone. It's awesome. Yeah. So the idea is that basically on your smartphone you can accept credit cards yeah. from other people, so just like cash. Yeah. So, and you don't, now normally when you are able to accept credit cards, you have to get a merchant account and you have to do all this right, finagling and, and setting things up and blah, blah, blah. Annual fees and yeah. like, I mean, just nightmare. It's a big nightmare. And then you have to worry about chargebacks, you know, if the other right. person charges you back, then you actually, not only do you not get the money, but you have to pay. Because <laughs> you, have to you pay didn't like get, a penalty because fee. your friend's a deadbeat. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So it's, it's just nuts. So this takes all that craziness out of it. And now if you just want to pay me back with your credit card, say you borrowed 20 bucks for lunch yesterday, and say you're like, okay, uh, oh, I forgot to bring some money for you, I'll just use my credit card, now I can accept it from you. This is really good news for anybody who has deadbeat friends. <laughs> because if your friends always go, oh, I don't have any cash with me, I can't pay you back for whatever it is that I took from your house or whatever. They can't do that then, anymore. Yeah, like my friend, I owe him money. So now he's able to like get this app and be like, well, now you don't need to pay me cash. You can just go ahead and like swipe swipe your credit card and, and pay me. So And it's really neat, too, because they um, like when you get the app, yeah. It's the app, and then you have to um, you have to pass like I don't want to say pass a credit check, but they yes. they take your social security number to make sure that you're not like well, stealing no, someone's identity, pass. and like I mean it's really it's safe in that way. Yeah. And they provide this little dongle. It's like this big, and it's a little tiny square, and you put it in your headphone jack, and that's how you swipe oh, cards. Oh, that's I was wondering how they did that. Yeah, and okay. they send it to you for free. The app's free. Everything's free. And then um, the uh, it's called Square Up. I think you can find it at squareup.com. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's really really neat and uh, and I like I mean if anybody wants to get something like that I mean I highly suggest I mean I think at the start you have like a limit on how much you can charge in a day so that you're not like yeah, you know <laughs> some crazy shyster isn't like running around so I've never raised credit cards but yeah. um, and you can email receipts to like te you can either text or email a receipt to whoever it is that you took money from like it's really really neat nice. the future of that's great I love this app I like the idea of like an art somebody who's an artist selling yeah. their art they can now accept credit card payments on their iPad or on their you know on their Android tablet or whatever like or books or books there or whatever it is you know you can sell all that stuff it's going to be awesome and I yes I agree PayPal is going to compete with this if if not, buy the service. I'm going to say they're going to buy the service within two years. They would be smart, too. Yeah. So, Okay, so uh, next story, Droid does tablets. Verizon and Google collaborating on an iPad competitor. Big news. Yes. So uh, Verizon Wireless CEO Lowell McAdam confirmed in an interview that they are working on an Android-powered tablet with Google. Uh, so Google and Verizon certainly have had a lucrative partnership with Android uh, in the, the mobile, you know, with Motorola Droid, for example. Right, yeah. Um, so this really this makes a lot of sense that this would be the next place that they would go. Right. Uh, now there's no details yet regarding release date uh, or specs or manufacture or anything like that. Um, but you know we expect to hear more about this. I bet they're moving pretty fast, and I'll well, bet it supports Flash. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would I'm say sure, that'd be a safe bet. I'm sure if it releases any time after July 1st, if they're going to release it, it'll have Froyo on it, native. Yes. So. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that, I think. I'm looking forward to what the specs are and how it's going to work. And, and again, like if there's going to be some platform that goes with it. Yeah, they'll have an iBook store in there. Or they'll have Google's version of an iBook store, I would be willing to bet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so next story, Sprint releases Android 2.1 for the Samsung Moment. Finally. <laughs> yeah, this is like a, a about, it's time. Like about time. It's an about time story. Um, so there's really not much more to say other than that. So. Yeah, well, it's just so anybody, if you have a moment, like you just need, if you have a moment. Yeah, by uh, that you mean the phone. If huh? you have the phone, the Samsung moment, um, just know that it is an, it is a PC only upgrade. Like you can't get it over the air and it oh. will wipe your phone. So be aware Ooh. of these two things before That's... you go upload 2.1 because it goes from 1.5 to 2.1. Now, so it blows away all your phone Wipes numbers and Wipes the phone everything? clean. Oh. And Mickey Mickey wants to know where's my hero update and Sprint said that they're really pushing to get that out by the end of the month. So fingers crossed. Wow. Okay, so next story. P prepare to be blown away by Froyo Android 2.2. Yes. Um, so it's coming next week. Uh, many reasons to get excited, but basically the things that they're, we think will be in it. Uh, major performance boost, obviously. Uh, apps 2SD support. Flash 10.1, an updated Android market. Native tethering, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. And a new desktop. Uh, Google employees are keeping quiet, as they're required to. Uh, but some of them have been dropping hints. Uh, and, and those hints are basically, you're going to love it. It's amazing. You're it's incredible, yeah. So. They had the little statue over at uh, the Googleplex. Yeah, so we're they gonna. They had gotten there and it was like all shrink wrapped. <laughs> and TechCrunch sent this, sent one of their like reporters or one of their girls over there. Yeah. And she was like taking pictures of it and then she tried to unwrap it. And security's like, we are gonna escort you out of here if you get any pictures of what's underneath there. Like scram. Like wow. they told her just beat it. Yeah. And and uh, and she she hightailed it out of there, but she got some really good pictures. But then I think. Whoever, somebody saw it or saw it leaving wherever it was going or whatever and snapped a picture of it, and it's, like, it's really cool looking. Oh, that's cool. It's really neat, because they have all the, the little, like, sculptures. They're real tall. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And they've got, you know, cupcake and, you know, eclair and donut and all that. And, and then they, now they've got Froyo, and it's waiting there to be unveiled. So I so think they week. might unveil it. At, yeah, they yeah. unveil it next week. Probably. Um, all right. That's it. That's our news. So it's time for App of the Week. So uh, lately, there's been a really big push to raise awareness about the dangers of texting while driving mm -hmm. and being a distracted driver. Yeah, something you wouldn't know anything about. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. You texted about. me today from the road because you were late. I didn't text you. I emailed you. Yeah, you actually you emailed <laughs> but me. But my car wasn't today. moving. It was just sitting there. Okay. Um, so Oprah, actually, well, I bring it up over two weeks in a row, so weird, um, recently featured uh, families who lost loved ones uh, to distracted drivers. Katie Couric brought up the topic, said the text and drive issue needed a wake-up call. Yeah. I mean, basically, the crusade against distracted driving, especially for teenagers, has become a really yeah. big topic du jour. Like, and, and it's, this is, um, yeah, and a lot of people are like, that's why I love the speech-to-text feature on my Nexus One. And yeah, they, like anybody who has 2.1 or higher has speech-to-text, which is great. But for younger, less experienced drivers, that still might not even be enough. Right. So that's where Otter App comes in. And Otter App is our app of the week. It's a Seattle-based software company whose concept was born uh, from a near miss of the owner's three-year-old daughter um, by a driver who was preoccupied with texting. Yeesh. So, I mean, that's that's turning yeah. lemons into lemonade, if anything. Sure. I mean, that's that's really, I mean, that's amazing. And that owner is here with us today, Eric Wood, the owner of Otter App. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Ashley. And um, so tell us a little bit about Otter and how it works. Well, it's a, it's a, what we try to do is create a comprehensive text management system as opposed to just painting ourselves into a driving safety corner. Um, we really feel like if we're going to affect some sort of tangible change on the roads, it's going to be done from within the texting culture and not sort of with uh, big brother type invasive uh, methods either you know legislation and education can only go so far and then a lot of the software and hardware devices that we've seen are accompanied with words like um, lockdown and and govern and uh, control and you know if you push up against anything in nature it tends to push back and I think teens are times 10 in that regard so 
um, what, what we did is we just wanted to uh, have applicability in, in the home, office, and on the road. And I think what that does is it, 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 it allows us to show teens, and especially the highest risk user group, like you said, uh, that we respect texting. I mean, this issue, I think, people are already talking about tipping points on texting and driving and the whole texting culture. And I've been studying this. My wife thinks I'm a nut because I read about 100 to 200 pages a week on texting and driving and texting at work. And I really firmly believe that this issue is in its infancy. Um, you have college freshmen now who have Facebook accounts and uh, and they and they text and they do not have email addresses. I think I'm so hip with all my email addresses and I get back to people and I'm hitting balls over the net. These guys, they're not even using email. So, uh, you know, 72 percent of uh, of teens now are uh, admit to, you know, to uh, to texting and, and driving. So, you know, I just think that people are talking about a tipping point, but we're not even there. I think this issue is really in its infancy and the way to to address it is to give the teens and the young user groups, specifically between 13 and 22 is the, the highest risk group that we're seeing, is to give them a tool and, and have them have, a, have uses for it other than on the road. And then we'll find that they'll use it on the road. So basically we're offering a tool and not a, not a shackle, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that was the one thing that I think um, when I had originally talked to you, the one thing that um, a lot of teenagers really sort of responded to when the when they were presented with this app is that it wasn't a lockdown. It wasn't right. taking away their rights as a cell phone user. If you can, <laughs> I mean, if you have rights as a cell. Yeah, but if they feel like it, then yeah, yeah. I'm mean, like you're 16 well, I, and you have no rights. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a your parent and I'm taking your. Unless phone. you're 16 and you think yeah, very differently. And then you think very that. differently, yeah. right? But they, but for them, like it was very much not about control. It's more about like we just want you to be safe. Here's something you can use. It's a carrot, not a stick. Exactly. Absolutely. But, and it does have some teeth. I mean, we have a parental control feature that has a session specific passcode. And what that does is it, it, it engages the parents on the topic with the teens. But more importantly, um, the auto reply feature and that functionality, which is, by the way, its own app in Otter Urban. There's just an app that's just Otter Urban for people who want a uh, texting auto reply app and it's getting really good uh, ratings and, and responses. But we've had uh, my favorite use case right now is a teen who uh, we were contacted by the parents that said that the, the teenager was using the auto reply feature to schedule his own texting blackout period so he can get some studying done. So basically, huh. just like I did during this interview right now, I, I just hit my auto reply and set it for two hours. I, I said, uh, I, I just left it on manual. And I said, I'm talking to Ashley with this week in, in uh, Android, and I'll get back to you at 5 o'clock. So you can text me right now, Ashley, and that's the reply that you'll get right away. And this teen was doing the same thing. He was not disconnected from his social group. He still feels connected, but he's got the, the phone there, and the, uh, the notifications are turned off. He gets some studying done. So that teenager, in my opinion, is going to be so much more likely to see Otter and welcome it into other parts of his texting life, and ergo... Uh, driving. I mean, that's where we we see teens uh, taking it upon themselves to just hit the GPS mode button, and that's really all you have to do. I did another interview where the person really wanted to see more action. Uh, I uh, four weeks ago I checked the the GPS mode button on my on my Motorola Droid, and it's just been on. I forget that it's on, but when my car is in motion, it silences the the incoming text notifications, and it also silences the ringtones unless I'm using a Bluetooth device. So I'm not fumbling for a ringing phone, and I'm not tempted by that, you know, that Pavlovian need to respond that we have when we hear those sexy chimes and buzzes. It, it, there's something about it that I, I'm not immune to it. I definitely, if my wife or somebody texts me while I'm driving, I, I admit I'm tempted. So I, I haven't been for the last four weeks, and it's, it just works great. It seems incredibly, um, like, we always think about how, like, attached we are to our phones, and I think sometimes we don't realize how attached we are to our cell phones, but then, like, when you have to go without for a little while, you're just like, oh, my God, like, right. I'm missing yeah. out. Yeah. I'm missing out on everything, and so I feel like this is sort of a this is sort of a really nice mitigation factor. Like, you're not having to completely cut yourself off from the entire world. Like, people are still getting texts from you, but then on that same note, you're you're practicing safe driving and you're practicing, you know, and, and, and like you said, I mean, even if you just want people to leave you alone, 
I just right. like, hey, like right. everybody leave me alone. Like I'll get all your messages. It's not like my phone shut off. I'll get everything and you know, I'll respond to it in, in time, but I need this hour for whatever. Right. But, and it's yeah, and you're and and you're hitting the ball over the net. It's just that Otter's doing it for you. And so you can kind of focus on doing one thing at a time. And I think it also tends to promote the idea of doing one thing well with quality results as opposed to doing seven or eight things at once with mediocre results is maybe a better way to go. So there's, you know, there's uh, other things that it, it leads into in terms of quality that, again, I like that we haven't painted ourselves into a driving safety corner and we're, we're not taking an invasive sort of lockdown uh, approach. Um, we do have some teeth to it with the, with the parental control feature, but I think if the if the teens and other people can can see the applicability across the board, whether you're at home, office, or on the road, it, it'll become a part of the texting culture. And you know, I it's funny you said about the 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 need Ashley, because I I have before when I've talked about this, I've equated uh, texting when you look at it in, in the context of big tobacco, um, it, it's sort of the nicotine of the cell phone industry. And so I'm a huge fan of personal responsibility. Anybody who knows me. Uh, knows that that's my own personal philosophy that I, I think you know that that's that's important but I do think that there's a certain amount of responsibility that the big cell carriers have in delivering these delivery devices if you will uh, to these people and and the stats are just now rolling in on this topic on the highways and I think as we move forward and uh, and more you know small sheriff stations and so forth are aware to check texting records before they're gonna you're gonna slowly see, uh, the statistics becoming more and more alarming. I mean, Utah is at the forefront of this issue with uh, David Strayer, who's uh, been on Oprah several times. He's the sort of the father of distracted driving uh, study. And with Utah, with all their education and being the, the definitely the harshest in terms of legislation, just this week they had a, an article come out that said that their texting and driving is on the on the rise. So something has to be done from within, and that's where we saw the need. And the other jaw-dropping part, I guess, which I thought it was priced really reasonably, but it, it seems like a lot of the competition make it sound like you have to build and launch your own satellite to get one of these systems to work. And ours is three ninety nine. dollars And when I tell people that, they say, oh, is that a month? And I say, no, no, it's three ninety nine. You own it. We don't want any of your personal information. Just go use it. And they're really shocked. They think that there's maybe, you know, does this really work because it's only four bucks? When you look at some of the competition, that's twenty five dollars to ninety nine dollars, and they have recurring fees, and you have right. to manage it from a PC. And it's a lockdown th system. Yeah. And so I just, I, I felt like there was a big chasm when I started looking at this um, after the incident with my daughter between the efforts of the legislature the really noble efforts of some of the groups that we're aligning ourselves with on the education front and and then what is actually you know tangible results on the road and and th this is why I did it it's just uh, it it came to me at 3 a.m. and we've been we're on a tear very nice so um so there's otter light otter app and otter urban like what Correct. are the differences between the three how much do they cost yeah what are, the what are yeah what like explain to our viewers like what different things um, are included with different versions of Otter so that they can maybe choose which one would be best for them. Sure. Otter, Otter Lite is basically just a taste. It gives you uh, three um, uh, auto replies in the uh, in just a default, if you will. Um, it's the original concept for Otter, which is an acronym for One Touch Text Response. So if you if you have Otter enabled with Otter Lite and uh, a text comes in, three big balloons pop on your screen and you can just quickly touch them and say yes, no, or, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep being touched later. The three default responses. And that's more of a, I think, an office thing where people want to be even closer to their text in terms of management, but they just quickly want to, like I said, use that analogy of hitting the ball over the net. Um, that's more of an office type setup, but it does give you uh, the, uh, the idea of what the rest of the screens and the functionality are. So it's, a, it's basically a taste. Um, that's what Otter Lite is. Um, Otter Urban is specifically for the user that doesn't have any need for the GPS. Maybe they like to manage their own text, certainly uh, while, you're, while they're driving. I mean, certainly you can use the auto reply feature um, to manage your, your text while you're driving. It has the same functionality. It, it stops all uh, incoming text notifications. So if they're, you know, organized, and we've met a 
lot of users and emailed a lot that are really into the auto reply apps. Uh, we had one guy from Canada who, you know, I thought I had a lot of time for testing, but this guy had downloaded and returned 12 apps and he got in touch with us and said that ours had the, the best functionality. He had some questions about it and I was, I was really pleased with that, but there definitely is a crowd out there that really likes and have specific needs for their auto um, reply for texting. And so that's what Otter Urban is. It's for, again, for somebody who doesn't have the needs of, of all the GPS and parental control features, and it's $1.99. Hmm. And then you, um, you move up to $3.99 for Otter Full, um, which has all the, um, it has the one touch text response, it has the auto reply with unlimited customizable uh, grouped responses. And then it has GPS mode, which, like I said, I just hit that button. That doesn't have anything to do with parental control, but the functionality is the same. You hit that, you can go back to your other apps, do whatever you want, just forget that it's on. And when your car hits 10 miles an hour, it silences incoming text notifications. And if you don't have a Bluetooth, then it'll silence the, uh, the ringer. So that's good for adults. And then for the parental control feature is the same functionality as GPS mode, except it incorporates a session specific passcode, four numbers, you type it in and uh, either parent can have it, you know, they can have their own passcode. And I think that that feature is designed not only to, you know, really uh, de deter teen drivers from, from doing what they're, what they shouldn't be doing on the road, they should be focused, but it, it promotes discussion in the family. And I really think that there, there are going to be some teens that, that are going to be introduced to Otter uh, through the parental control feature, but as they start to see some of the other functionality, you're going to have a conversation with the parent, and they're going to say, you know, let me put Otter on, and don't worry, Mom, I got it. You know, I got GPS mode on. And mm -hmm. we really want them to take ownership of it. This is a this is a tool for the individual, and I think that that's our – I'm going to be speaking in June down at uh, uh, Function with the, the Secretary of Education in uh, California – at a press conference down there at a, a high school that's still to be chosen, but it's definitely one that's that uh, they're choosing. It's pretty easy, unfortunately, now to choose a high school that has a text and drive fatality. Unfortunately, I didn't realize how easy it was to do that until I was talking to uh, uh, Kelly Browning with um, Impact Teen Drivers, who's setting all this up in this press conference. Um, you know, they they're going to pick a high school, and I'm going to I'm going to introduce Otter, and I'm. I'm going to tell them just that, that, you know, try to introduce it as a, as a tool and not a shackle. And I think it'll, I really um, have high hopes that it can integrate into the culture and just, you know, you start, hopefully we can start using Otter like a verb, like Google, you know, did you Google that? Did, in, in, you know, what's, what's going on with so-and-so? Oh, they ottered me. You know, it, if we can just integrate like that, I think we have a change, uh, I mean, have a chance to really affect change on the road and it'll be, tangible results and not just, uh, you know, paper campaigns by the big cell companies that they're running right now to kind of make sure they don't end up on the wrong side of this issue. But I, I'd like to see something real happen on the road. Mm -hmm. Now, just really briefly, like I know that you had mentioned a number to me last week, and I just, just for total uh, clarification, I want people to realize how much teens actually text per month. Because when he told me this it's number, amazing. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, that can't be right. So that's a, that, that's a poll we have right now on our on our blogs, and it's interesting because we're we're trying to ask parents what they think their teens text, and a lot of parents uh, we find are auto paying their their kids' uh, cell bill, and they're not really looking. But uh, you're uh, there are many many teens right now over fifty percent that are texting two thousand times a month, and there's a quite a few that are over three thousand. We had our first yeah, first case. It, this is amazing. This one. I just I, I had to read this twice uh, uh, because I really couldn't believe that we had a first case of of under um, 18 carpal tunnel surgery in North America. It was on a 16 year old boy, oh and it was from texting. Um, we, we're also seeing teens that are, are um, getting insomnia. They're not they're not sleeping and dreaming, and their their grades are dropping. You know why they're, they're sleeping with their phones? They're waiting for that phones. text to come in. That's but what it is. Yeah, and they're wow. just—they have their phones in the cradle and they're sleeping with them. Ugh. So, you know, I just think that that this that this is here and it's here to stay. And I think what we need to do is—I mean, I, I remember what it was like to be a teen. I my wife sometimes says I'm still, you know, at that maturity level, but uh, it's it's definitely. <laughs> um, 
it's definitely one of those things that that if we if we try to deny that this is part of their culture, yeah. I think we're going to fail. I think right. I think we really have to say, look, we respect this. We may not understand it entirely, but we respect that this is important to you. And here's a tool to help you, you know, in the to help you uh, in, in in your studies, in your social life. And then there's a few dangerous parts of this, and you know we'd like you to use it there too. Hey. And I think that's a better approach than than you know doing the lockdown thing. Eric, I have a question. So you mentioned earlier that um, a lot of kids today are using Facebook instead of email, um, and I happen to know that even even myself, I, I have a Facebook app on my mobile device. Um, so I'm continually getting notifications about oh this person messaged you, that person messaged you. I'd imagine that'd be a, just as distracting uh, as text messaging. Right. So I'm wondering whether you, uh, recognizing the fact that Facebook is a primary way teams not more. collaborate, yeah. Because when I get my notifications on right. Facebook, I'm like, ooh, what'd they say on my comment? Like, right, and right. I like, like, I'm like, <laughs> right. well, I don't know what they exactly. said. So I'm curious, are you, do you have plans to expand Otter into Facebook land in some way or shape or form, or? Uh, we, we would look at that um, right now. The, the we haven't seen as much of that from the user groups we've talked to. Uh, you know, we're we're um, certainly concentrating on teens, but there's other big user groups out there that people don't think about, like truckers, um, and yeah. they, they've been a they've been a huge target of the, of the uh, legislation out of the, the federal legislation from Ray LaHood and and even state legislations uh, that definitely targeted truckers and so forth. So when you look at the the overall um, culture and, and what's coming out of it, I think, primarily right now we're we're uh, we're looking at the at, at the smartphones and texting. And if you know, I think there's something that that I don't know how we would interface uh, from a functionality standpoint. It would probably be something that we would have to get together with Facebook and uh, and come up with with something where we they would allow their uh, functionality to work with ours. Yeah. But that's certainly, I don't think that's hard to do at all. Yeah, no, not really. Uh, so it's, I, I, to answer your question, it's definitely something that we'll, we'll take a look at as we, and it's the same thing with, um, you know, looking at the, the, it's interesting to see the tablets right now that are coming out and you guys were talking uh, about them. I was listening to your to your news and I, I for a few minutes there I forgot that I was going to be on next. I was just sort of engrossed in your news. But Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, and by the way, that 28% of uh, Android smartphones, I, I was cheering over here. I'm glad uh, I'm glad Will had my sound off. Um, <laughs> but uh, to, to in terms of the tablets, there's another um, uh, technology that we're not sure. We're just keeping an eye on it. It doesn't right now. It doesn't have applicability because um, I don't see it being used uh, in the car so much. Um, but certainly, if it becomes uh, a primary, either like you said with Facebook or texting functionality moves into that arena, um, we would take a look at, at uh, having our apps um, available for for tablets as well. And certainly, for example, Otter Urban. If you're not going to use the tablet in the car. But you want some time just to, you know, um, like Ashley said, read that book. And I'm going to work on that smell, by the way, for the books. Thank you. Uh, I might, yes, no problem. Um, <laughs> Fresh but, paper. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I like a new book. Um, but the, it, you know, if it if that starts to move in that direction, I would I think we would move with it. So it, it, this is definitely a changing environment. We don't take anything for granted. I mean, we're watching all the platforms and. Uh, and all the opportunities, uh, but I think right now the the the, st the stats will, will back me up that uh, the biggest danger we have on the road is uh, is is right now is texting and driving. I mean, it's it's right. I just read a study that it's six times the the legal alcohol limit in terms of impairment. So Jeez. that yeah, if you you if don't this realize a, like you know yeah. I don't think anybody really realizes like how impairing it can be. Yeah, it can be pretty impairing. I mean, yeah, I just it's. Uh... Man, it's well, crazy. They, and, they, and they actually they study these things, and they they came up with uh, in an in average, I think it was six seconds of texting. You can be looking down, and people won't admit this, but you can be looking down at, for four and a half seconds. If you're going 50 miles an hour, that's about 400 yards. Yeah. You think of all the things that can fans. happen on a on a football stadium. I mean, that's and the, the problem is is that people don't realize they they think they're getting away with it. They think they can do it. And just like the lady with the incident with my daughter, she never stopped. She kept going. We still haven't spoken. She doesn't know how close she came to changing my life and hers. And and I think there's this sort of uh, 
you know, this, this sort of false uh, sense of, of, of that I can, I can do this, I can get away with it. And then, but unfortunately, the wake up call doesn't come in the form of a little fender bender where everybody does a group hug and they exchange insurance cards. It, it comes out in the form of a T-bone with glass and metal and steel all over the highway. And it's, mm -hmm. so those are the, there's no wake up call. The wake up call is, you know, the, yep. it's the end of the road. So, <laughs> the wake up call yeah. is, <laughs> is not waking up. That's yeah. actually what it there, really boils down to. Well, yeah, um, go ahead, Ashley. I'm sorry. I was going to say that that is like all the time we have with, with you. But if you are interested in more information on OtterApp, you can find them online at otterapp.com. You can check out all the different companies, uh, different movements, different groups of people. Um, I think like Teens Against Distracted Driving. I mean, there's so many people that are kind of getting on board with this. You can read about it. Um, I, and, I, and if you would like to send any questions to them on Twitter, you can find OtterApp on Twitter, at OtterApp. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and Eric, thank you so much for coming on the show today with us. Ashley, thank you very much. And thanks for providing a live forum like this where everything doesn't get left on the, on the editing floor. This is really a great forum. So oh, thanks, Eric. Well, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that. And, um, and so that was Otter App. That's our app of the week. And uh, it's about that time. It's that time again. I know. It feels like it goes by so quick. It does. It really does. Um, as always, Mark, a pleasure. Oh, always happy to be here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jeff, you're probably watching this somewhere in Oregon. And um, I hope you're having a good time dressed up as Wolverine walking around like <laughs> Portland. Um, and uh, you can find Mark on Twitter at Mark Jeffrey. Yep. Uh, if you feel like following Wolverine around, you can go uh, at Jeff Ammons. Mm -hmm. And um, you, as always, thank you to our viewers. You guys are fantastic. Good questions. Um, and uh, next week. I have a really, really good interview. Are you guys ready? I'm going to announce it right now because I already know. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who ported uh, Android to the iPhone. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's going to be good. He's going to be on the show via Skype next week. So that's going to be awesome. If you would like to send me your questions for this man, hit me up on Twitter, Android Ashley. That's going to be a good one. It's going to be really cool. So, um, and then I have another. I have a person in studio coming in two weeks wow. for our app of the week. So I like. I'm. I'm on it. You're on it. You're I'm doing rocking. great. I just say, well, more Fantastic. people love the show. Yep. Like, more people and more people are coming to the show, which is awesome. And if you are out there and you own a company and you want to be featured on This Week in Android, you yep. can sponsor us. That's true, too. Which is pretty awesome. You can. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the contact? How would email, you... email sponsor at thisweekend.com. Sponsor at thisweekend.com. And you can reach a crowd of ravenous, intelligent Android fans waiting for your advertising. That's right. Yeah. Yep. We don't have anything on the table. Not yet. We could. We could, though. We could have your items on our table. Yeah. If you look at some of our other shows, like uh, This Week in Startups, uh, This Week in Cloud Computing, you'll get an idea of what the ads look like, too. So we really go out of our way for our sponsors. Yeah. And, and as Jay Press says, you're always welcome to tweet and heckle me. That's fine, too. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, and we have other shows. We do. If you hit up thisweekend.com, we've got This Week in iPad. We've got This Week in Cloud Computing, Venture Capital, Startups, Twitter, Android, and of course, the award-winning Kevin Pollock's chat show. Streaming award-winning Kevin Pollock's chat show, which is fantastic. Who's the guest this week? Do you know? I don't know offhand. Um, I don't recall. Well, Anyway, if you go to thisweekend.com, you'll see it. It's good every week. Let's just all be honest here. because yeah, it is. It's he's awesome. Really great discussions on that, and that's on Sundays at 3 yep. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so... Uh, I can't. I'm like, I, like I'm flabbergasted that it's over already. I can't believe it. Goes it goes sometimes. So, but uh, thanks again, everybody. And um, in two weeks, I'm gonna have an Evo. Like that's, <laughs> that's like the only thing I can think about. I'm like, I'm gonna have an Evo in two weeks. Um, but uh, that's been this week in Android. Thanks for watching. <laughs>